So I'm good. Just the end of the day here. How about yourself? Where are you? Early morning. So I'm here with a cup of tea. Um, it's a bit of a wet one oh, here today. Uh, oh, really? <laughs> never mind. <laughs> and can you share where you are right now? Yeah, so I am just where my sub pod is. So I put my Tommy's in yesterday. And then if I turn around this way, that's where my garden is. So, Wow, that looks great. Fantastic. Then, so I've split it into sections. So as I walk down, come here. You have to tell me if the signal gets dodgy because... Um, it does as a yeah, go. It's getting a little up like but yeah. Okay, now we're lagging. But but it's pausing on some good areas, so it's almost yeah. like the lag's good and we yeah. just get to stop and pause. <laughs> um, that looks great. Uh, do you, you do you have um background in landscape design? No. Um my brother in law is a landscaper. Um so okay. he landscaped the patio for me and the path. And then I did everything else. Um, my dad helped me with the pond, um, so I dug it out and that, and then he helped me line it and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, apart from that, just enthusiasm. <laughs> and where did this enthusiasm come from to create this garden uh, design? So I got into gardening, like a lot of people, mainly in lockdown. Um, before that, I didn't see myself as a gardener, didn't want to get involved in gardening. And then once the patio was done, um, it was a case of I need to learn about plants so that I can make it look nice. And then um, mm. basically, I just caught the bug. <laughs> um, I was working all the way through lockdown, um, wow. in, in the first one, and, and all the way through the rest. So it was kind of like you weren't allowed to go every, anywhere. And so it was just kind of like straight into the garden and like in free time and just, yeah, just getting cracking on so um you've come a long way in two years and where, where did composting come on from that two-year journey had you compost before that or was that part oh, of i, I hadn't enthusiasm all. um obviously as you know when you uh, message me he says have you ever thought about composting and i says yeah but i'm scared <laughs> um so the the shed that we inherited it was um riddled with rats um so once oh. i got rid of that shed I kind of, and then obviously got into gardening and then at first it was kind of like for selfish reasons. Then I was kind of like, well, how can I make my garden a little bit more habitable for wildlife and stuff? And then- What were the selfish reason, reasons to begin with? I'm curious. Yeah, uh, well, just for pride of my, wanting my garden yeah. to look good yeah. and wanting to- Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> um, but yeah, and then so, um, yeah, it was just a case of, I thought about composting and I kind of sort of learned the benefits of it. Um, but mm. it was just kind of that not knowing where to start and being scared of kind of enticing rats <laughs> back. Um, so when you message, I, I, I remember I replied to you and says, you know what, I've been thinking about it a lot. <laughs> I just don't know where to start. <laughs> so... Yeah, that's and that's a really good point. I'm so like rats were one of your biggest concerns there. How have you gone so far with the subpod? Subpod being your first compost system. Yeah. And how have you gone with with any any pests or any rats? And you can be I honest. No, no, yeah. So um, obviously, just here because the the other thing that obviously is the smell smell of it and that, um, mm -hmm. but like you literally don't even notice it's there. Um, so I can turn around. Just got it here, and um, yeah, just been adding it. I, I was a little bit scared to do the aerating thing at first. Yes. <laughs> um, it's I, funny. I, I thought I'm yeah. going to put it in all the worms. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. It's it's funny how quickly people um, gain some uh, some care and love for the worms. Uh, like yeah. people go from complete squirmish to. To worms being like oh no i don't want to hurt them the good thing about the aerator it just kind of twirls them around instead of like it's not a slicing yeah, yeah. action but you'd be surprised how many questions we get i'm like i don't want to hurt the worms uh which is great like it's good that people are thinking about worms um but yeah i i, I love that i love that you've you've come in there uh brand fresh uh and new and and without much of a concept and like you've picked it up really quickly uh, and I think that why you've been so um, effective with it is that 
uh, it seems like you you had a purpose behind it. Like you had your garden that was helping. Like how is compost helping your everyday life? Is it is it the the planet aspect or is it just the soil aspect or is it is it something else? What what really oh, drives you to do it? I think oh, when you start, kind of learn of the benefit of composting, it you mm. kind of have that thing on your conscience, don't you? Of that like, oh well, there is like I can do this and it will help. Do you see what I'm saying? So when you're oblivious to it, you kind of just go through your life blissfully unaware of the, that you can do this thing and kind of put your scraps in there. But then when you kind of are a little bit kind of more clued into it and learn about the fact that um, how much food waste goes to landfill and how it doesn't kind of break down as quickly because of the air getting to it and stuff like that, and then you can just chuck it in this and it will break mm. down. Obviously is that kind of, it starts to etch away at your conscience. Like, it's something I can do. It, it's nothing to me, do you know what I mean? It's not like it's a massive, do you know what I mean? And so far, they've just looked after themselves. I've just added the scraps every now and again and, and I've aerated it. That's what, literally all I've done. Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Absolutely. It's... That's that's a really good point. I think like for people out there watching, I'd like to get your... Yeah, to to answer me this question, how many people, out of like what percentage of people do you think compost? And yeah, that it's surprising to actually find out that number. And I, I think you really you really nailed it there, Adam. It's like when we think about the destruction that food waste has, and then the fact that you can just throw it, you can compost it outside. Like my sub pod here is like literally closer than my rubbish bin so why would i walk further to go to my rubbish bin like it becomes like you know simplicity like complete efficiency at the, at the minimum yeah. and i think what what really stops people actually i want to hear from you why do you think there's there is such a low percentage of people composting we got three percent here that's very close why do you think what do you think are the biggest barriers adam um i think we're we're creatures of habit um, so what, what was it? a few times like I've been um, in the kitchen and I've gone to put some food scraps in the bin and my missus has gone, oi, 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 no, like, do you know what I mean? Remind yeah. me, put it in the caddy to then bring it outside. Um, but I also think, uh, yeah, it's just, we, we love convenience, don't we? And I think if we kind of look at something and maybe we don't know how to do it or it seems a little bit too hard, straight away, mm -hmm. barrier. Um, and so, yeah. For me personally, I'm not just saying this. Uh, that's what I found really good about Subpod is it's kind of done the thinking for me, and it's kind of like I've had some instructions to kind of put it in play, and then it's just kind of like I'm just adding to it. If you get what I'm saying? So absolutely, yeah. That's that's right. I think that's the barriers is like not enough knowledge, and I don't have enough time. How, how long does it take you to actually use the Subpod once a week or every time you feed it? Not that long. Um, that's probably a couple of minutes. Can we show them? Do you have any food? Do you have any food scraps? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to have a look. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm just going to answer this question. So, five percent, less than five percent of people compost out there. It is, yeah, it's growing though. Like, have to be positive about it. There are more and more people composting, but the two major reasons are not enough time and not enough knowledge, and they are two myths. Um, but you know, I'm not here to shame people, but I'm here to educate. And so I, oh, here we go. Uh, let's read out this comment. Uh, from, I have two composters that we throw grass clippings, brown materials, weeds, and old vegetables into, but I don't know what else I'm meant to be, uh, do to, to make nice compost. It's never been aerated. Oh, fantastic. So I'm guessing you just have a pile compost system. Uh, diversity is always key with any compost system. The more you put in there, diversity of items, uh, the more diversity of microbes, and that's an absolute key to getting good compost. But um, yeah, happy to chat more about that. My extent, extended family don't want to do it because they gross, they're grossed out by the thought of rotting food waste. Yeah, I know that's a, that's a hard barrier to get across. Do you have any any thoughts on that, Adam? Um, no, <laughs> I've got an <laughs> extended okay. family. I, my baby doesn't really have an opinion on it yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you have a family of worms, so you could replace your family with the worms, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> Come and live out here. Um, it's not normal. Cartoons show the garbage man 
but the compost bin yeah that's that's true and it hasn't and that's a really good point like how does it integrate into culture uh like so you can have I think composting has always been like this farmer or this like real greeny, uh, like this, we have this idea that it's just, it only fits a certain person, but yeah. it can, anybody can really do it. And I think it getting it into mainstream culture, uh, I don't know if yeah. you have any thoughts on that, Adam. Um, we've got heaps more. What's the difference between wormery and a composter? Good question. So you could say worm farms are literally just a... Um, it's just taking advantage of the composting worm. And the compost worm is an excellent way to decompose food waste. They eat their entire body weight of food every single day. So they do it really rapidly. If you just if you did it without compost worms, you would have to make a big pile just so that um, there's enough microbes that can break up there. So uh, three, three, uh, three foot or one meter um, yeah, by height and, and uh, width. So you really, you go into a lot more effort, but you know, you get a different quality compost and you can compost different things. So it's all what really works for you. But the main difference is that worm farms are a lot more suited to an urban environment. Um, sorry, Adam, I know you got, got your food scraps out kindly. Uh, no, I, um, I had a lot of people the other day saying that they was going to ask questions on there, so. Did, what do you, so, what have you got in your food waste, Fresh bucket? Because I, I just uh, emptied mine out today, so I don't have much, and it looks pretty grotty. Bags, um, peppers, just yeah, just scraps really. Just normal. Stuff. Have you composted meat on the bone before? No. Meat? Not have you? Do you? Are you vegetarian or do you eat meat? I haven't. Um, I haven't composted any. Probably because what? Well, <laughs> what's that? Probably because there's never any left because I eat all of them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, if you, when you're up to your third month, try composting a little bit of meat on the bone if you oh, yeah. if you wish to dare. Just like oh. I've got a little bit there that's from a lamb, and um, it's quite easy. Yeah, it works the same. And like I've gone crazy and actually put in five kilos of of like a chicken carcass after a, a soup. And the whole system just heated up um, above 40 Celsius, like 100 Fahrenheit. And the worms evacuated for a week. Uh, I didn't feed it, I didn't touch it, and they all came back. And I wouldn't recommend that because, you know, there was some casualties. Uh, but you can do that. And it's the nice thing about the sub pod. The worms can come and go. And you may have noticed you can compost citrus and onions and, and dairy. Things that you usually couldn't compost in, another, in a worm farm. Just simply because the worms can leave uh, and the system will will adjust itself and they'll come back and eat the microbes so yeah cool little tip if you wanted to start composting food yeah, well, meat scraps put that up and uh, put onions on <laughs> yeah. but i thought you can't compost meat bones in a bed growing food plants you eat good question um i you can you can you can definitely compost meat on the bone you can't compost um uh like pet poo that's that's a no-no because there's e coli in there but you can definitely do a little bit of meat. All right, we're going to dump at the same time, Adam. Not so much going in here. And you've got the larger sub pod. How is that for for you and your partner? Um, it's been good. Um, I've not even got onto the left hand side yet. Yeah, it's it's amazing. You don't know, where you think where does all the food scraps go? You think you're going to fill it up faster? Uh, I don't know. How's your experience been with that? Well, so obviously I've not had it long, um, and yeah, kind of probably halfway up now. Um, yeah, maybe I don't eat fruit and veg, <laughs> and maybe I should eat more. And that, that's why <laughs> it's not faster than it probably should. Um, that's 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 hilarious because I was speaking to. Um, dom today who owns a sub pod and she said it's a really good indicator when you open up your sub pod at the end of the week you're like wait i didn't eat that many and that much fresh food because my worms they're still hungry so it does yeah, yeah. and um the other thing I, I i've been having to put a lot of bananas on because i okay i haven't a habit where we buy bananas because i'm like right i'm going to be on a health kick this week i end up nice. not going it so i don't eat the bananas so then they end up just going spoiled. So I need to get better at <laughs> actually eating my bananas. But I'm sure the worms enjoy it. So. Yeah, yeah, that's well, that's right. Hey, we can get it if somehow. Um, you know, what I'm really interested in. And this is definitely taking it off off topic. 
uh, and it's probably a bit out there for people listening right now, but turning Subpod into a toilet. Uh, I, <laughs> I, I actually gave one to a friend who lives in a community and I, I, I lived in Byron Bay for the last few years and it was a real hippish community and, and a lot of people just had compost toilets, but she chose to use a Subpod Mini and she has been using that for the last couple of years and it's actually going really well. And why I bring that up is because I was like, well, you're eating the bananas. Like one way or another, those nutrients can go into the compost system, whether it's through your back end or through the, the food waste. Um, anyway, that was just a random thought that I had that I thought you might be interested in. I will leave that one for the time being. <laughs> <laughs> Upgrade that. See how you go in your six months. Um, here we go. We got, we got a question about uh, we have two large sub pods. Um, I read that you can compost pet litter. Yes, I've got a cat and you can compost pet litter, but I would recommend doing that in a separate garden bed and, and nothing. Don't eat edibles from them, from the, uh, the garden bed as well. Um, amazing. Cool. Maybe they should put those in cramps, camps and national parks. Maybe they should. Yeah. I, I think that would be a great idea. Uh, Adam, how do you go with your carpet? Do you are you being a good composter and adding that every time? Probably. Um, I, well, I don't have newspapers, so it's only kind of um, corrugated boxes. We have a lot of oh, delivery, cool. um, so I've been putting a bit on. But I've kind of that's something where I've kind of thinking, am I so, am I putting too much on? So I've been putting more toilet roll um, on instead. Um, so yeah, because I just kind of can't gauge how much to actually put on. I don't want to put too much on there. It's a good question. And, um, I think how long have you had the sub pod for about a month now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think so the more, like you're, you, you have that general curiosity about it. And I think like by the third month you will start to get a feel for it, but in general, you can't really overdo the carbon. Like it's, Carbon is, is just, a, it's about balancing those materials, but it's also about balancing the moisture. Um, so the only time when you would actually feel like you put too much carbon in it, if it's too dry, but when is it, when is a compost system too dry? Like usually when you add food scraps, there's they're 90% water. So you really can't overdo it in that sense. Um, cardboard is probably my least favorite carbon. Um, it still works. It breaks down, but it's less, um, it's got less surface area. It takes a while to break down. And it's, it's not, it's not as easy for those microbes to combine it with the food waste and turn it all into compost because that's kind of what's going on there. It's like one part food waste, one part carbon, stick them together, get compost in, yeah. in essence. Um, but it, I, I totally hear you when you, if you don't have newspaper around, like who gets a newspaper these days? Uh, so uh, do you have access to dead leaves? Because that, be that would probably be my hey. first preference. I have a massive tree at the bottom of the garden, so... <laughs> Perfect, man. Perfect. Yeah. I mean, it's it's uh, not autumn where you are, but um, yeah, if you if you have access to dead leaves or um, dead grass, like if you dry out the grass after you mow it or something, like that's, yep. that's a carbon source right there. Fantastic. You guys have a cool video about preferred carbons on the site, right? where you see the worms fast forward to break it down. Yeah, I don't know which video you're talking about, but there is the preferred carbon is always coconut core, which you can buy and you set it up with the sub pod. Did you use the coconut core, Adam? Yeah, I've, I've bought that with the worms. So um, and how, how was that? experience for me, because obviously kind of Googling worms <laughs> in the UK, <laughs> talk talk and, me through that experience the, like the buying the worms like how was that because it's you know I'm uh, uh, yeah I forget so, that I, well, what was it like I had no um, kind of knowledge on worms and um, yeah so I kind of like looking around saw that the main worms it was like the red ones were the best ones so um, I kind of looked at what I should buy in the UK and came across that a lot of people were talking about tiger worms which sound mm -hmm. cool anyway um <laughs> i ended up buying um them from a site called yorkshire worms which okay. is a county in the uk and i drink yorkshire tea so the word like i know they're going to be happy because 
Yorkshire tea, so they're getting Yorkshire tea bags. Um, but yeah, it was a very, it's very kind of odd, like going on the internet and searching for worms and that. I was, I was in work, I was telling my work colleague, I, was, I says, yeah, I'm just ordering some worms. And he's like, you are? <laughs> so. Yeah, it's, I, oh man, it is weird, isn't it, at the start? Because it's almost like what well, you can order worms online. Uh, yeah. Were you surprised about that? Yeah. Well, yeah. And then obviously they came and it said like, it said live. And I thought to myself, well, I don't know what the postman must have thought was, was in there. <laughs> um, and then obviously I got the coil with it and then broke it down, put it in. Everything was kind of easy to do. It's just obviously when it's quite new, you you still have so many doubts that even though it yeah. seems easy to do it, that you're doing something wrong. Yeah, that's that's. And how did you solve that when you felt when you had a few doubts? What did you do? Just, just cracked on. <laughs> so yeah, just carried on. Googled it. I always kind of Google it and do it a few times just to make sure I'm not doing something daft. Um, because I've probably got potential to do duck things. <laughs> um, what so, yeah, what so, was your biggest doubt? Can you remember what was the biggest doubt that was coming up when you were setting it up? I just didn't want to, I, I wanted it to be right because I didn't want to have, mm -hmm. obviously um, order these worms and put them in and then yeah. like, they die. die. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I kind of put the koi in and then I was, I had used, cold water and then i was like kind of thinking maybe i should use warm water right <laughs> i don't want them to be cold and then i was like <laughs> live outside <right?" laughs> um so yeah got them in and then obviously they, they were all there kind of wriggling around put, put the thing on took, took them in for the night and um <laughs> came back the next day and some of them had gone or do you know what i mean so, and so then yeah, you're yeah. thinking what did i do wrong meant to happen <laughs> Like, do they like it? <laughs> um, so, yeah, so then obviously it started putting, because you have to leave it a week, don't you? Mm -hmm. And then um, started putting the food scraps in the week later. And then, but then obviously I was just putting food scraps in and I, right. I didn't hear it for the first little bit because I just did it like, it, it was something where it just looked so barbaric. <laughs> um, so in the end, I just kind of like put my big boy pants, <laughs> aerated it, and then... Obviously, as I was aerating it, I started seeing all the work start to come up. And then nice. Obviously, they were in there and had been enjoying what I've been putting in. So, <laughs> oh, thank you for sharing that. That's re that's really good insight to hear. Like those doubts along the way, and I, I mean, you've come in there with the uh, the intention to care for the worms, and so thinking about them. So that's really good. And I, by the third month, I'll have to chat to you uh, because. I think you're going to notice that there's just going to be an explosion of worms there because they pop double in population like every six, every six weeks. So usually about the third month, you're just going to be like, whoa. Um, so, and that's when you can really push, push the system quite a bit. And that's when they start to move into the soil a lot more and your surrounding garden um, really benefits from it. So that's, we always say like the start of the, of when you're setting it up, like the first week, you know, it's really slow and steady and it sounds like you you did that process of feeding it little by little um and you, yeah adding carbon every time but but once you once they're going they're like they're unstoppable yeah yeah it's like you say obviously that the kind of not knowing and lack of maybe knowledge is the kind of big, biggest barrier um yeah. so we, obviously you kind of getting down that kind of journey of starting you still kind of have those doubts of, am I doing it right? Or do you know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, it's just one of those, isn't it? Um, At yeah. the time. Yeah, that, time. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's it. And like, we really, like, I think that's one of the big things about what we try to do at Subpod. Like we, we started this company as like a little startup in Byron Bay and it was really with the intention to like, make composting really easy and accessible and that's everything from like when you open up the lid you got the instructions there we have a community that's just somebody on there all the time to answer questions but what we hope is that it can kind of dispel the myths of it's it's hard it takes time and other people can share that around because you know this has got to be like a global movement um i do want to ask this question 
before I get on a rant, uh, like how does how does composting impact your daily life? So how does it how does it change your life on a daily sense? Um, not really, to be honest. And I think that's what I like about it. Like, mm. I, sometimes I forget that this is there. It's an eyesore. You see what I'm saying? Like, I've got obviously um, some salad, like some lettuce, some tomatoes planted out and stuff. And then obviously when I'm inside, I've, I've got the caddy that I've got from you guys as well. And it looks nice on the side. You know what I mean? Again, it's not an eyesore. So mm. you just, as you're doing things, chuck things in the caddy and then every few days just bring it out and I think that's what I kind of like about it is the fact that it hasn't really do you know what I mean I've not noticed myself thinking oh for Pinette, I've got to do this or do you know what I'm saying um yeah that makes complete I mean that's a great great response if it hasn't impacted your life that much that means there's one more reason to do it that it's it's not getting in the way of our busy lives um I've got one more question for you. Uh, before, actually, we've just got a question. How much did the Yorkshire worms cost you? I think they were just under, <clears throat> sorry, it was just under £20. Um, I bought 2000 um, Okay. And then I bought the Koi thing as well. So I think in total it came to just over £20. And delivery was free. So, oh, cool. That's pretty good. Um we have how long can you before you can start using the compost you've made look you you can start using the compost within about a month or two months but i would i would wait a bit and like i actually i'd actually recommend making a worm tea um when you're using the compost because that way you can actually just take a part of the compost and put it in a strainer put it in some water and then you can spread it around to your garden bed so you can maximize uh that compost in there but that's a really, really good question. I can send you a blog on that with more information. Adam, I know you've got work to go to. So I've got your last question for you, which is if somebody is sitting on the fence, somebody that lives in the city, uh, just like you, it is in an urban environment, is not umming and ahhing about composting, what would you say to them? I'd just say go for it. I think um, in life, I think we, in general, we kind of sit on the fence with a lot of things and sometimes we are slow just to kind of pull our sleeves up and just go for it. So, um, yeah, I'd, I'd just say just go for it and take that leap into having a go. And I think, obviously, that's what I've done with this, but that's what I've done with my whole garden. Like, I'm not trained to do anything. Like, I'm literally running on enthusiasm. And I think you always surprise yourself and aim high. And then if you don't, if you only get here... And that's better than where you would have got anyway. Do you see what I'm saying? So, yeah, just go for it. That's great. It's a really genuine response. Thank you. And you've got a little bit of a give giveaway going on right now. Do you want to share that before you shoot off? Uh, so obviously, you guys have kindly um, gifted a sub pod. Um, so there's a post on my feed. If you tag anyone, then that will be an entry into winning a sub pod. So, yeah, yeah. Um, very easy way to um, get such a fantastic thing um, and it's obviously open to UK, US and Australia so yeah, check it out and um, good luck in hopefully winning one Thanks Adam, really appreciate it Thank you everybody for joining us today Happy International Compost Awareness Week and yeah, if you're, if you're new to composting I really urge you to um, yeah, to, to dive in a little bit deeper uh, ask, ask the hard questions of why it's a challenge for you to compost and, and find if there's solutions out there. Um, and if you're already composting, it's a great opportunity to just share that message as wide as you can because there's only one week a year uh, that we get to do this. I mean, we can do it for other years, but uh, I mean, for, other, for other weeks. But yeah, it's a, it's a really cool week. So get amongst it, everybody, if you can. So happy composting, everybody. Thank you so much for joining, Adam, and enjoy the rest of your day.